Hey there, ladies and gentlemen. I am the Almighty Zentaco. This is a request someone gave me on my Discord. They wanted to know how do you do a triple jump where each jump is successively higher, similar to like Super Mario Bros. 64, where you're like, whoop, wee, waha, you know, and you, then you spin on the last one. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, this does use the platform movement object. Um, so if you don't know how to use the platform movement object, I have a different tutorial series, which is probably a lot better for that, in which uh, I think it's called Simple Platformer Tutorial. Uh, it's my, probably my most popular video. So go watch that first if you don't know how to do any of that stuff. But uh, what I did in advance was set up some simple platform movement stuff. Um, I have a jump, a jump while held in air, which makes you jump higher. There is some animations for jumping and falling and uh, then a stopped animation. So that's all I have right now. I'll show you what it does. So there's my guy, and that's it. He jumps and he falls. So we want to um, make this so that he can jump higher. So to do that, we're gonna need to have a value, a variable, and we're gonna put this under the player object, and I'm gonna call this jumps. I'm also going to insert a counter, which is something we're gonna use to debug. This is a this is a really good thing to do when you're making games. It helps you kind of figure out what's going on in case uh, you know something goes wrong. You can see whatever values you want to see. Put them in a counter. It's one of the best ways to figure out what's up, what's going on with your program. So we're gonna always set the value of this counter to the value of jumps. So the idea is we're going to want to have a jump value, a 1, a 2, and a 3, and we are going to change the value of the PMO's jump variable, um, where's that at, jump strength, based on which jump it is. So this means we're going to need to change this jump value while he's on the ground. We're going to need to increment it up. So to do that, we are going to find out, we're going to ask if the um, object is standing on the ground and we only want this to happen though once while he's on the ground so we don't want this to continue to happen so we're going to add a flag event we're gonna find out if the flag zero is off under and this can be under any object but we're gonna use flag zero on the player objects just because that makes sense for what we're doing okay so if that is off we are going to go ahead and make that flag on so go to flags set on flag zero and we are going to set the value of, actually, we are going to add to the value of jumps. So go to add to, alterable value, select jumps, and we're gonna add one to it. So let's find out if this works. So we are one by default, we jump, touch the ground, nothing is happening. And that is because uh, it incremented up and we did not turn the flag back off. So we need to do that. Um, I suppose we can do that when he's jumping or falling. Either is fine. We will say if the player is jumping, then we're going to set this flag back off. So it was only able to increment, increment once because we uh, flipped that flag once, but we didn't reset it. Let's try again. Make sure we can count up. We're just trying to see if we can get this value to count up, and it does do that. All right, so now we're gonna need to clamp that value because we don't want it to just increment uh, eternally. We want it to, after we hit our top jump, which is number three, we want to set that back to jump number one. So we are going to want to find out if the alterable value of jumps is greater than three. And if it's ever greater than three, we're just gonna set it back to one. So go to alterable value, set jumps to one. All right, let's find out if this worked. It's for one by default, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, <clears throat> so now we need to set the various jump strengths based on what number we've got there. So if we look at our platform movement object, we will see that 500 is the default jump strength. So we are going to go ahead and add some events here. We're gonna find out if the alterable value of jumps equals one. Let's copy this. We need two and three. Now we're going to edit them to reflect two and three. So <clears throat> now we're finding out if jump equals one, if jump equals two, and if jump equals three. So uh, while jump equals one, we want to go to the platform movement object and change the variable, set jump strength to 500, and we can drag this down for each of these and then edit them. That's the fastest way to do that. So we're going to edit the second one. This is for number two, um, 700. 
and then third we're going to make it 1000. Let's give it a test and see if the jumps are higher. Okay, looks like it works. Let's make that last one a tad bit higher. 1100. Perfect. Okay, so we have our, our three successive jumps. Um, <clears throat> now we need to do the thing where we spin whenever we are on the third jump, because that's what Mario does. Since this is going to be directional based, I'm going to go ahead and set up directions um, for our player. I'm just going to copy all of these and flip them. And then I'm going to allow the player to switch directions based on a button press. I'm going to make that the left or right arrow. So I'm going to add a new event on input right and on input left. <clears throat> and then we're going to change the direction of our sprite. Let's see if that worked. Okay, that did in fact work. All right, so now we need to spin our um, our sprite based on which jump it is. So we'll find out is the object, the player object jumping and is the jump number three. If this is true, we are going to spin the player sprite. So we're going to do that by going to angle, set angle, grab the current angle, and I'm going to subtract 20. Number one for maximum quality. Let's see if it works. Okay, so it does kind of work, but it also kind of does not. So we uh, have a problem where he, when he's falling, he did not reset his angle. So he's just wherever he ended up on the jump, which is going to be very dependent on how long you hold in that button. So whenever the player is falling, go to object states, object is falling. We want to go back to the player sprite and set his angle to zero. That'll be the default angle, one for maximum quality. Let's see if that worked. Yep. Now, there is going to be a problem. I switch directions and watch what happens. He spins the other way. So we need to copy this event and paste it with control C, control V. And we need to edit them a bit. So we're gonna insert another condition and we're gonna find out which direction he's facing. So click on the sprite, compare the direction. If he's facing right, we want it to be subtracting by 20 on the angle. Um, and then we're going to throw it in here and then switch directions to find out if it's left. And if it's left, then we need to modify the event so that it is plus 20. So now it should be directional based. Yep. All right. Well, there is one more problem and that is that if you watch um, let's say we get to jump number two or jump number three so this is his max spring jump um, in Mario there's a cooldown and so you can't just do two jumps and run a mile and then your third jump is gonna be really high you have to do them in quick succession so we need to make sure that that happens because right now if I press X again it's jump number three and he's spinning so to do that we're gonna add a value to our player object we're gonna call it cooldown Okay, so to do this, we're going to need to find out if the object is standing on ground, if the player is on the ground. If he is on the ground, we want to subtract from, not set, sorry, we want to subtract from the value of cooldown. So subtract one from it. 
Now we need to set this cooldown up in advance. So go to the player object under cooldown. We need this to have an initial value. Uh, I'm gonna make it 50. Maybe 60 actually. All right, so if the cooldown has reached zero or is lower than zero, so find out if that's true. Uh, alter by value, cooldown, lower equal to zero. When that happens, we want the jump value to be set back to one. And that essentially means that when the cooldown is up, the value of jumps has been reset. That way, you have to jump in quick succession for this to work. Lastly, though, we need to refresh this cooldown um, whenever the, the player jumps, because we only want this cooldown to happen while he's standing on ground. So we will say, object is jumping, um, and then we're going to set the alterable value of cooldown to whatever we had, which was 50. Or no, 60, I messed that up. <clears throat> Let me edit that real quick. Yeah, that's 60. Okay, now obviously this is a little messy. You can consolidate a lot of these events. There's a jumping event here, jumping event here. You know, you can stick these all together. But for readability's sake, I just separated them. Let's find out if it works. Okay, so we're standing here and we have a value of one. Now we're at two and it's back down to one. So let's get this up to three, back down to one. So as you see, the cooldown does in fact work. We got our spin. And uh, yeah, so all you need now is to add some different sound effects based on which jump it is, and you have yourself a Mario-esque triple jump. All right, guys, well, thank you for watching. Um, this has been another video by the Almighty Zentaco. If you guys need any help with making your games or uh, just want to, you know, hang out, I have a Discord channel, which is the best place for budding game developers who are working with Fusion to hang out and get uh, assistance on their various projects. So as always, guys, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.